Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about Orbit Fabs. So let's dive right into it. Now, what exactly is the problem that Orbit Fab is solving? Well, you have to understand, whenever you look at rocket, when people say it's like 90% fuel or 99% fuel, that is absolutely true. But here's the consequence of that. Uh, by the time we actually get it to orbit, it's mostly spent. So there is nothing left. Now, here's the once you are in space, there is you are surrounded by vacuum. So you don't have to expend energy. While that is true in short term, not true in long term, specifically if your mission is stretching in years, that's no longer true. Meaning, if you are in low Earth orbit, you have to use fuel for station keeping or you will crash into Earth. If you are in geostationary, you have to use fuel to keep your station keeping perfectly. Otherwise, you could drift into either graveyard orbit or sink into medium Earth orbit. So that is a very serious real scenario where people have to spend fuel in order to maintain station keeping. That's what we call station keeping fuel. And we have, like this is a real world reality, we have decommissioned many working satellites that were very expensive, state of the art, really good, had enough life left into them but we had to decommission them simply because uh, their fuel was spent that's the sad reality of it at this point in time and satellites uh, many satellites and many missions for example be it uh, many telescopes they have to be decommissioned simply because they ran out of station keeping fuel and this uh, is problem is compounding meaning you may think oh this is one small thing no no almost everything in geostationary band has to go through the same faith so it's very very serious very very real problem and refueling in orbit will solve a lot of problem meaning it could even allow you to uh, launch a payload into low earth orbit because majority of the rockets are uh, rated for their low earth orbit for example uh, if you take at falcon 9 it does not have the ability to send 20 tons to geostationary or it can only send 20 tons to low earth orbit but if you can refuel in orbit you have the luxury of sending that 20 tons to geostationary while using falcon 9 so that is why there is a serious problem that we do not have any tangible way to refuel anything in space at this point in time. So this company, Orbital Fab, which is surprisingly young, like horrifyingly young, they were started in 2018. So yeah, they're young. And they had first in space refueling service for satellites. That's their target. That's their motto. They are only focusing on, they're not focusing on making a rocket. They are not focusing on uh, selling services or anything like that. They said, Dude, we are offering one thing, so refueling service. That's it for satellites. That's it. Not even targeting rockets. It's like that's one critical goal they are focusing on. And they, uh, you have to understand liquids behave very differently in low uh, gravity scenarios or zero gravity scenario. For example, liquid is a hazard. For example, if you take ISS, you have water and if water is there anywhere on you, it's dangerous because it will cling to you and it has happened where an astronaut almost lost their life simply because their water cooling garment broke some pipe broke and water started to seep in and this happened this is the real world the water started to crawl like this literally on top of their face their nose were barely uh, you know able to breathe and if it was like uh, going on for even few more seconds that person literally would have drowned on one liter of water because there is no gravity so it does not pull away like you can see many videos of people astronauts are squeezing cloth and the water is just there it pools up so that's a very serious thing water uh, or any fluid in zero g environment behaves very differently it's almost counterintuitive to us so all the design decision that we make in earth will no longer apply there so we have to figure out uh, very seriously can you handle fluids in zero g environment this company in june 2019 uh, they did first startup to supply water to iss and they did it from the inside this is not a rocket system coupling or a big thing it's like a thing and that's why they had to spin it they had to do all hulu to it so to make sure that this system can stabilize itself this system can work and dispense liquid without creating overpressure, without creating under pressure without creating bubbles without creating voids like nasa has restrictions like if you want to send 3d printer to nasa there is restriction if you want to send water to NASA, there is seriously large amount of uh, restriction, like damn amount of restrictions. So this is very serious and this is a very amazing achievement that this is a small startup that's just like, okay, this is a system and NASA accepted it. Uh, again, they went through all the test of gauntlet, they survived it and then they used it in ISS and it actually worked. That's amazing. And then in uh, June 2021, they became the first operational fuel depot to launch like they actually launched it using falcon 9 uh, this was the system they launched so you have to understand uh, at this point in time they are the only company that can claim truly that we know how to deal with fluid 
in zero g environment while we are manipulating it like mo uh, most satellites have few liquid fuels but they are like i launched it that's it done go home but they are like no what if you can refuel it again and again that's a, a very hard thing to do in zero g environment this is the only company at this point in time that i know of and i have able to find that has actually proven that it can be done so what's the logic behind it? Well, logic behind it is very serious, is that somebody had to be first. For example, uh, people don't want to buy electric cars simply because there is no charging network. Charging network uh, is not something anybody wants to build because there is not enough electric cars to justify the cost. You see, chicken and egg scenario. Same happens with almost everything. Like for example, uh, game console. Like if not enough consoles are sold, not enough game companies will make games for it. So that console will not sell because there are not enough exclusive circular logic. That's why like every large company hire their own studios to justify the expenditure. Otherwise they will not make money so it is one of those things where like somebody has to break this chicken and egg scenario somebody had to just take that leap of faith and do first just have to so they became the first uh, to actually launch fuel depot in space that gives them a very huge street cred or space cred in this point in time so that creates a very serious scenario where the people are interested in it now we come to critical aspect is anybody actually willing to pay for it? Now, this individual, the basically the CEO of this company, he has the actual advantage of being working in space industry for long enough, where he had like around 10 years of experience in space industry. So he actually had the, you know, contacts and he just went to the people who are dealing with satellites and like, how much would you pay? Like, let's say, let's just say from a company point of view, you are a company, you're operating this uh, communication satellites. How much you are willing to pay if somebody can just refuel your satellite so just refuel not no refurbishment nothing just refuel just peroxide fuel and the answer was like damn so that answer motivated this whole company that's like he studied the market and that's the reality of it that satellite manufacturers will pay you money it's like shut up take my money give me the service as simple as that so there is a serious demand for it so even though many companies are like you know what there may not be a demand for it no the, he knows for there is a demand but somebody has to take that leap of faith and they are like dude okay we'll become the leap of faith now there is another aspect of it how do you know that you can go to a fuel pump and refuel your car because the nozzles are standardized it just works you don't have to think about it there is no such nozzles quote unquote in satellites while there are nozzles that are used by ground crew to actually refuel it it does work but generally they are sealed up so they do not open up in a launch environment and not to mention uh, they're not inherently designed to be like a quick coupling scenario it's just like you know you put it there almost solder it uh, per uh, seal generally they don't try to solder it because it could create pressure events you get the point like it's generally not intended to be reused again you can have a scenario where you can uh, like cut it open but you have to have robotic arms to do it some company thought of that actually doing it, but it's just not viable somebody have to create a nozzle that are quote unquote space quick connect so this company is like uh, we're gonna make Rafi and the standards for this uh, quick connect would be open source uh, not open source as in like open open as in like anybody can build it like you can find full technical specification of this puppy and you can integrate this thing into your satellite your station satellite once you have this then company can be like okay we have fuel depot what fuel do you want you want peroxide you want xenon again for ion engines or whatever have you we just gonna like you know send a carrier satellite from um, small carrier satellite which is gonna basically connect from this uh, carry as what the fuel it needs then it's gonna go to your satellite and dump the fuel using this port so this is the idea behind it nobody's gonna do it unless there is somebody the first somebody has to be the first for example the first king first reusable rocket somebody has to be the first so they are like okay we're gonna do it yes it's a very risky thing but his market understanding is very serious it's like yeah people willingly are destroying multi-million dollar to multi-billion dollar satellite just because it ran out of fuel people will pay for it he knows that for a fact he's just like okay i'm gonna stake my company on it so what about funding? At the end of the day, claims are super easy to make. Even making things are easy to make. It's like I specify, there is physics, there is engineering, and then there is grand daddy layer known as economics. So what were the economic side of it, the funding side of it? They, in the few years, basically, from 2018, they have amassed surprisingly good amount of fortune. Not GG, not like Elon Musk kind of GG, but good amount, like seriously good amount of fuel. And very serious amount of people are looking at it very seriously. What kind of serious people? If you know this logo, you know how serious we are. Uh, this is from Space Force and uh, that's a 12 million. Now you may be like 12 million is not right. Again, this company is very small. 12 million for them is like significant. And they are also dealing with Astro Astral and they have min won many awards, uh, which again, each of them boost your prestige. Each of them improves your stock value. Each of them gives you a little bit of street cut to you can take out more loans. So it is seriously capable hands. Like financially, they are in capable hands. And business case is really awesome. That's the another aspect of it. Like there are many companies right now that are cropping up that we're gonna create a small satellite launch vehicle for CubeSats. 
there is no point of it anymore simply because the market is saturated there is already it's like um, how there was like you know uh, many 3d co co printer companies in the beginning then there were only two survivor you have one prusa and one ender everybody else is just clone of these two so uh, again on higher end there is some different expert in like majority of things why these two companies are they actually had something and everybody else was just cloning each other so same goes with the space industry like every company is like we're going to make small satellite launch vehicle it's like dude every country has it at this point in time everyone is building it it's just the most oversaturated market you can find so they have a business case where nobody was taking seriously and everybody wants it every uh, communication satellite expert is like bro give us this ability right now we'll pay you whatever you want to do so very small start but very big scope because right now they are only focusing on peroxide but they do know for a fact that in future they will expand it like how you go to your petrol pump you can have multiple things for example you can have uh, electric charging you can have uh, petrol you can have diesel you can even have like you know high uh, peroxide uh, high test fuel whatever have you so the same idea goes there also so start would be very small one thing very small capacity big enough just it can refuel one or two satellites properly but it has very big scope meaning get this going then it has like you know spiral out of control very easily and they have focus on very good deliverables meaning not giant claims uh, we're gonna do this no no this is the thing that we're gonna show you that we did okay we did it this is the second claim we did it this is the third claim like very good deliverer so it's, a, it's somebody run by someone that understand deliverables meaning can you actually show this thing? it's not elon musk it's like no we say we're gonna go in 2019 we go in 2019 we say it in 2020 we do 2020 so it's really good on deliverables and it allows others to grow now from a business point of view this is very uh, difficult but it's the reason why Jeff Bezos is so rich. It's like, think of it this way. Who sells on Amazon? Other people. Then how the heck Amazon makes so much money? Because Amazon worked their ass off to create an environment where others can grow utilizing them. And they are like, just keep the money coming in, baby. Keep the money coming in. So that's the whole aim of this company. They are not in competition with any other satellite manufacturer. They don't even get there. Like, they will willingly work with as many satellite manufacturers as possible simply because, hey, if everybody has one fuel port standard, we will become the de facto supplier. So funding is awesome. Business case is awesome. Like they, are, they could literally become a next big thing without anybody noticing it. So what we can expect in the future? Well, uh, humanity has gone through some changes. And uh, many times we went from like, you know, cave dwelling to something serious. Happened like in big chunky steps. Ch chunky step one was basically fire. Chunky step number two, agriculture. Chunky number step number three, uh, you know, agriculture. Like we had steps. Each of these steps allowed us to turbocharge our civilization. In space, the uh, first turbocharger was ICBMs that allowed us to actually make things that can stay in orbit. Actually achieving orbits allowed us to expand. Actually having human flight allowed us to expand. Actually having a reusable rocket allows us to expand economically. Now having this re, uh, basically refuelable stuff in space, actually done, not done in CGI, not this, like actually done, it will allow us to grow like exponentially. Right now, like think of it this way, like uh, who, who, who took SpaceX very seriously when it, they started in the early days? Nobody. Right now, they are seriously a company that if they say that we're going to do 100 launches a year, people are like, I think they can pull it off. I think they can pull it off. And they are actually like a whole world and SpaceX, SpaceX alone has launched more satellites. So realistically, uh, that's why many times paradigm shifts happen. This is one of those. And it will allow new mission milestones that we cannot even think of. Like, for example, having something in low Earth orbit and directly pushing huge, humongous things into geostation simply because you can refuel it. And you may like, can't this like a small fuel tank, will it have enough room? Not necessarily, but it does not have to do it quickly. It can do it in what we call orbit raising maneuvers. Very little amount of fuel, time consuming, but does allow you to send very big things to very large orbits without consuming too much fuel. At that point in time, having even little, little bit refueling or maybe refueling every month uh, may allow you to get extra amazing delta fees. Refueling rocket can be only done after we do this. We cannot directly go from, we are barely able to transport few liters to we are transporting hundreds of liters. That's not going to happen overnight. Like this thing consumes so much that we are not talking in liters, we are talking in tons. So first we have to do liters first. Yeah, one liter, half liter, seven liters. Th things of that way. Then we can like, yeah, now we are talking about like, you know, tons, hundreds of tons, 700 tons, 5,000 tons. That's why. And it will also allow us to clean up space junk. There are other companies that's also uh, working with this to in order to ensure creating a tool that can allow to manage situation and maybe even clean space junk cost effectively. We can clean space junk, we can't do it cost effectively. But if this works properly, maybe we can. So it is really humble beginning and really serious potential. Let's see where we end up in the future. 
So this was my presentation on Orbit Fab. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.